Greetings. My name is. I was. I was almost about to say my name is Resident Evil. My name is Neo Second, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of Resident Evil Survivor. Now, this is a game that came out on the PlayStation One, much much like the first three games in the series, and it's a spin-off title that takes place between the events of Resident Evil Three Nemesis and Resident Evil Code Veronica. I've actually only I actually only ever played this game for the first time four years ago via emulation because I've never really been able to find a physical copy of the game and I can't really buy it on the PlayStation Network so emulation was pretty much my best bet and well to put it uh, short and blunt this game is bad not not bad not bad enough to to the point where I'd call it terrible but largely overall overall bad now Capcom was feeling particularly experimental with uh, the, the RE formula between the event between uh, releasing Resident Evil 3 and developing Resident Evil code Veronica so they decided somebody uh, over at Capcom at Capcom decided why not take the classic Resident Evil style gameplay not only and not only render it in a completely 3D environment, but to put it entirely within a first-person perspective. Yeah, basically a first-person Resident Evil game, with where you can actually uh, point and shoot anywhere in front of you on the screen, any enemies or 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 whatever you want to shoot at, but it would otherwise play exactly like a Resident Evil game would in a fully 3D environment. Unlike the uh, pre-rendered backgrounds and fixed camera angles that you would be used to by this point. On paper, this sounds like it could have been a really fun game. But in, but in execution, well, again, it, it, le it leaves a lot to be desired. There are a couple redeemable qualities about the game, though. But I, I won't go into details on what, onto what those are until, I guess, after I finish it. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm playing this on the PlayStation on the ePCXE PlayStation One emulator. Frankly, number one because it's what I'm used to, because playing these PS One games via emulation on this channel is pretty much what I'm used to at this point. And number two, I'd be damn crazy not to play this game on an emulator of some kind because well, one of the problems that uh, Resident Evil Survivor has is that uh, even though there's a load game option that you can see here right on the title screen for some crazy reason or maybe because or maybe somebody at Capcom was just feeling really lazy that day and just forgot to implement a very important key feature there are absolutely no save spots anywhere in the game whatsoever from start to finish none zilch nada the only way you can save your game is by completing it and creating a new game plus file. And then just uh, starting a new game from that. You otherwise you pretty much have to you you pretty much got to have plenty of time on your hands if you want it, to uh, clear the game in one shot if you want to have any chance in beating it. Unless you're like me, you're playing it on an emulator where you can just use save states instead. And stop wherever the hell you want and, and resume and resume from that point onward whenever you feel like booting up the game again. So yeah. Save so if you want to save your game at, at any point in between gameplay, save states are a must. Or some other kind of little gadget or, or doohickey thing that will allow you to uh, save your game to uh, create save states. Anyway, I think I've uh, given enough. I've given enough uh, pretext. I, I'm not sure that's the right word that I want to use here, but I, I think I've talked. I talked enough, so let's uh, just start the game proper. There's no hard mode, so I'm just gonna go with normal. Resident Evil Survivor. In 1998, a disaster struck the quiet Midwestern residents of Raccoon City. An uncontrollable outbreak of the umbrella-created T-Virus transformed the city into an inescapable death trap. To stop the outbreak from spreading, 
Umbrella Incorporated was forced to wipe out the entire city. However, this was not the only location where an outbreak occurred. Those look like the same exact fire effects from Dino Crisis 1. In fact, a lot of the game reminds me, uh, with how it looks, reminds me of Dino Crisis 1. Which I like. And I see you're holding on to dear life on a helicopter. You're not going to get away. What has the helicopter pilot done to you, good sir? What makes you think shooting the helicopter out of the sky like that while you were literally hanging by, uh, hanging on its freaking feet was a good idea? You have the most intense eyebrows or forehead muscles. My head aches and I can't remember anything. My only hope is this gun. I must remember. I must survive. Where? Where am I? Oh! I... I don't remember... anything. Who am I? Yep, I am playing an amnesiac protagonist, ladies and gentlemen. I'm... some... I am in some unknown location. It's dark, it's dark and spooky out. And I came from a crashed helicopter and some guy was trying to shoot me out of the sky and succeeded. Now the big question is, who am I exactly and what am I doing here? That's basically all you really need to know about the story going in. You can just look up a basic summary of the game, even on the game's case or anywhere really, and it will tell you more than that, but I think it's actually better to uh, be relatively blind going in, because I mean you're going to learn a lot of what uh, basic summaries of the game that are on various websites out there will tell you sooner or later anyway. Plus, it gives you some incentive here to keep playing if just to find out what the answer to these questions are, if nothing else. And I gotta say, I really like the three. I really like the look of the three D environments in this game, which is one of the thing, one of the redeeming tr qualities to this game, if you were to ask me. Again, because like I said, it reminds me of, hello, there's our gentleman who shot us out of the sky. Because it reminds me a lot of Down Crisis 1's look. You, you look familiar, but, oh, um, yes, he's I just the can't remember. He's the asshole that shot you out, the name Ark Thompson is called. Ark Thompson, huh? Though I can't remember anything. I know that this was no way for anyone to die. You might want to look behind you. What? Zombie! Oh. And he has a key. I've obtained the rusted key. Right, well. Basically, I just like the, lo the look of the of the look because it reminds me of another ge another game by Capcom from the PS1 days that I really liked and I think the 3D environments look sufficiently spooky enough at this way compared to uh, pre-rendered backgrounds but I, but that's not to say that pre-rendered backgrounds don't look good too but this this is just a personal preference of mine anyway uh as you'll notice, as I continue playing the game, a lot of enemies that uh, I encounter are basically uh, 
model, basically we have models that were ta re that were taken from Resident Evil 2 and uh, other Resident Evil games, mostly 2. There's and there's a few unique enemies here and there that will that will come across eventually, but yeah. Now the reason I'm not moving on is because well I'm gonna get into that right right now. Unlike uh, un throughout certain throughout certain parts of the game, I will come across uh, areas that will uh, give me three different that will give me two or three different pathways to take, and depending on which pathways I take, it can influence how the story progresses, even change which kind of characters I meet. Kind of, sim kind of, well, actually, it's not sim that similar to Dino Crisis uh, decision uh, gameplay mechanic, because it changes a lot more than just how you progress through the story. S but and, and you yeah, because of that, and as a result of that, there's at least three different, there's three different uh, playthroughs that you can get with the game here that uh, has the same basic story throughout but it will progress uh, pretty differently and you'll meet a lot, and you'll meet different characters along the way basically I, basically I just repeated myself so this rusted key I found will allow me to take to open one of these three doors I can't backtrack once I go through so I got to uh, make up my mind where exactly I want to go like here I think this is a church of memory oops this is a church if memory serves. This leads to a restaurant, I think. And I don't quite remember where that pathway leads. But I'm going to go ahead and just choose the church. Hello. Now the nice thing about the weapon that they give you starting out, your basic handgun, is that you have unlimited ammunition for it. But it's literally every other weapon that besides a handgun that you find, even magnum guns, that has limited ammunition. So, much like your classic Resident Evil game, if you it's generally a good idea to save your big weapons and their ammunition for whenever you come across any big baddies here that in, in literally any other Resident Evil game, it would be a wise, wise idea to take them on with anything more than a knife or a handgun. The only problem is, well, number one, your handgun, if you're, well, number one, you can, you, there's no item boxes to speak of in this game whatsoever, so literally every single item that you come across you can basically uh, store in hammer space on your personal on your personal person. That sounded awfully redundant, but point is, you do you do not have to worry about uh, what about what items that you want to take with you at any given point of a game here, because you literally have access to all that at any point, and you never really have to worry about that. And number two, well, a lot of the enemies are slow and they kind of suck at attacking you unless you're like right in front of them and number three well what, wait what would that say an old church altar the word umbrella is written on the wall and number three well let me let me find some enemies and i'll show you what reason number three is for why for why uh you may not really need your big weapons very much at all if ever Okay. Now, oh, um, huh? Did did this thing freeze on me? The damn thing froze on me. Right. Now, as I was saying before, the game crashed on me. The third reason why you probably don't really need to worry about using big weapons at all so much for, uh, excuse me, 
Let me just turn my back on. What the hell? Is my mind playing tricks on me right now? Holy shit. Well, this is a very pleasant surprise. There is a... The reason I was turning my back on them is because, well, last time I played this game, and I know this was a, this was a glitch that was also common on actual PS1 hardware, is that if you turned your back on any enemies that you come across in the game, if you're not if, if you're if they're not in view of the camera or anything like that, they can't attack you. They'll just stand. They'll they'll just either run around in circles or just uh, stand right next to you or or something to that effect, and just not take a swipe at you. So that would give you the op that would give you the ability to you know either catch your breath, think up a plan, a new plan of attack, or try to move away from them a bit first, and then just turn around and just resume attacking them. Maybe that will work with literally every other any other. Literally every other enemy besides a zombie, but old clock is ticking. A winder seems to be attached to it. You obtained the clock winder, but yeah, that's 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 weird. Cause I'm pretty sure that, that when I when last time I played I played this game, it worked with the zombies too. I hope in that case then that uh, it works with all the other enemies. Because that would actually make things a bit more challenging. We've obtained the chapel key. Well, until I confirm, until I outright confirm whether or not this little glitch I told you about works with uh, any other enemies, let's just put my uh, third reason on hold for now. Okay, we got. It. There's literally nowhere else to go but this direction. Hi! That's... You know, if you were as fast as your counterparts in Resident Evil 3, maybe you might actually uh, stand a more of a chance against me. Because those suckers could get pretty damn quick. But uh, clearly they are literally just asset flips from Resident Evil 2, even down to their animations and stuff. Hello, we got a cutscene. This must be the break room. And we got the church manager's diary. Let's see what this uh, manager has to say. October 7th, 1998. Today, the leaders of each section of the city, including myself, attended a meeting with the commander. The briefing was on the destruction of Raccoon City. During the conference, everyone placed blame on William Birkin. He betrayed the company and wanted to keep the G-Virus for himself. The commander told us that if there is a traitor like Birkin in the city, we should execute him immediately and without question. Well, with the kind of really immoral, dirty shit that, you, that your entire company likes to uh, get into behind the scenes, you definitely don't want any traitors running around. I wholeheartedly agree with the commander's orders. This city is as vital to Umbrella as that laboratory in Raccoon City was. No. It is actually much more important. Do go on, Mr. Uh, Mr. Minister. We must not allow a biohazard to happen in this city. Well, going by all the zombies running around, I think it's a little too late for that. We cannot let Umbrella's efforts to buy the city and establish these billion dollar facilities to go to waste. We should keep a closer eye on the behavior of personnel in the future. 
Um, you know, if you didn't really like what you did in in a company like Umbrella, that being committing horrific human experiment experiments on people and other hosts of animals, this must be a very stressful company to work with, considering the nature of your work. Because, well, since obviously you wouldn't want what would be blatantly illegal shit like this to uh, get out to the public view. Everybody would be keeping a close eye on everybody. What'd that say? It appears to be a magazine for young people. So, hello. I'm sorry, were you... What? Okay, so... Twice now, the game's crashed on me. Definitely, uh, never happened to me before. I wonder if it's the version of the EPCXE emulator I'm using or something. Well, anyway. If I was an immoral piece of shit, I would hate to work for an umbrella because the stress of everybody breathing down my neck would get to me eventually. Hi. Bye. This old clock is not working. You've used the clock one. And look at that. A hidden passageway. Now, I wonder if, uh, much like a uh, certain room within a certain police station, within a certain city, within a certain past Resident Evil game, there is a hidden, hidden sex uh, sex dungeon tax of, you know, a hidden uh, taxidermy sex dungeon of evil. I almost, I got my words mixed up there. Hey, hello! Me being the arachnophobe I am, I will admit, it is definitely worse for me to see these things within a first-person perspective than, well, a third-person one, because, I mean, arachnid, right in your field of view, not exactly a pleasant thing to witness. Hello. You know, I do wonder how a virus like the T-Virus is actually capable of increasing the size of certain animal species, animal insect species to such ridiculous sizes like what we see throughout the games. We got the church's rear key. Because, I mean, wouldn't you need to... Wouldn't... I mean, I don't think that'd actually be physically possible. Unless you, like, um, I'm trying to think. There is a certain, there might be a certain science to it that might explain how something could get to be a size like that. Like, I don't know, maybe you need to eat a hell of a lot of uh, meat or something in order to sustain your rapidly growing body or something. That's probably, there's probably a lot more to it than that, but I'm pretty sure that there's, that somebody out there has explained how something like this could only be possible somewhere. Well, and even then, maybe not. But yeah, I know that there are scientists out there that, hello, we got mutts. Oh yeah, I need to try and see if I can. Yes, yes, I hear you ringing. Ha ha! I knew it! It's working with the dogs, even when they're attacking me. If I turn away, they can't hurt me. I knew I wasn't going crazy. This game is just that broken. Okay, let's take care of you. I got, I got a phone to answer. 
There we go. All right, uh. Hello. The phone came up. Don't you mean hung up? Okay, so there is a South End Theater Cinema down this way, and, well, there's a flight of stairs right down here. So. I'm going to go down the stairs. And look at that. It be the liquors. Or as I like to go, or as I like to call them, lickety splickities. Just jump like two feet farther. I have faith in you. Well, I had faith in one of you, and I got a cracked key. Yeah, expect more brokenness like this with more and more enemies I come across. So like I said before, this game is not exactly done well. At least we got a key and a green herb. That that was certainly done well. Ring, ring. V Vincent. Who is this? Vincent? Who's that? Wait, am I Vincent? Vincent, you are a murderer. A murderer. A murderer? What are you talking about? Answer me. Who did I kill? Well, I we, we killed a quite a bit of undead at this point, so there's that, if you want to count that. Okay, we... Right, I forgot I can't look up this thing. So, we got uh, three different places we can go. I think you can go into the amusement club, a library, and a hosp hospital. I am gonna go... with the hospital. <laughs> I won't allow you to escape. You're going to pay for what you've done. <laughs> you look like a gentleman who fell off the crappy classic Resident Evil voice acting is. It's just so charming. Or maybe it's just me. Nah, who am I kidding? There's no way it's just me. Well, looks like the guy who uh, tried to shoot me out of the sky is still after me, so there's that to contend with too. 
Various magazines for young people are lined up here. This phone doesn't seem to work. Can we get any magazines for old people or something? Let's be considerate for our elderly. Guys! Umbrella! Hey, Doctor, you don't look too well. They're not exactly the most conventional ways to deliver pain, pain pills to people, but I mean, hey, it works, right? And it's very instantaneous. A barricade blocks a passage. What the barricade? Uh, we got health. Health? That's. Is that an A? Health A, a examination? Health examination. I never noticed this before. Health examination. Either Umbrella has uh, some weird terminologies that they want that they like to use in this specific hospital, or or somebody would during translation of this game forgot how to expel examination. Both are equally possible, considering that Umbrella is seemingly staffed and ran by. Uh, So as long as you keep spamming your handgun, your handgun at them, zombies aren't really much of a threat in this game. Even if there's a whole flock of them. So we got our blue herb. What'd that say? This is a switchboard of the CT scanner. Uh, yeah, that's this. That's a little scanner thing that they use to. Uh, well, you know, scan your nerve systems and shit like that, right? Look inside your brain. Central nervous system. I know it looks for a lot more than that, but... Well, I can't really be bothered to remember the specifics right now. Alright. Well, at least they spelled medicine correctly. And it's locked. Did I forget a key in here? Find the key, that beautiful key. Where's the key? Wait a minute, I turned something on. Yeah, Umbrella's really lost its fucking marbles. It's th it, th it thinks that keys for doors are hospital patients now. And they need CT scans. No fucking wonder there's a biohazard right now. We got that open now. Now, what kind of glorious medicine will I find here? I wonder. Maybe a first aid spray. Alright, I hear you. Yep. Hello. I see you have a friend. It's okay, I don't discriminate. Seems to be an intercompany phone. The line is dead. Mm -hmm. There are anesthetics, ke anesthetics chemicals lined up here. I think you just want to use anesthetic. Okay, we got another green herb. Might as well just go ahead and mix a couple of these things. Got our mixed herbs, right? Did I just use that thing? God damn it. Oh well. 
I'll be fine. This game is not exactly challenging, so I never I never even died once playing it. So as long as I don't so as long as I don't go running around acting like a total idiot, I'll be fine. Get off me, buddy. There is a there is a good touch and a bad touch, and I don't think you want to give me a good touch. You've obtained patient's chart. Medical charts of the patients. Name: William J. Smith. Sex: Male. Age: 17. Young fellow. Height: 800 181 centimeters. Weight is 72 kilograms. Physical condition: Good. What? Not great. Mental condition, languid. I forget what that word means. Medicine, tranquilizer 10 mg in soup for every breakfast. Uh, hallucin, 5 mg in bread for every dinner. So, tranquilized and, hallucin and hallucinized. I like this shit already. Sarcasm, by the way. Jennifer. Sorry, Jennifer Campbell, sex female, age 18, yada yada yada, we got your physical condition good, mental condition unstable. Medicine, since she has been confined for a long time, she has become very suspicious. Putting drugs in her meals is ineffective, as she rarely eats. It would be best to put the tranquilizer into her drinking water. Oh, we got a removed one here. Named... Ryoji Yoka Yokota. Uh -huh, age 18. According to physical condition, according to the results of an MRI, a vein tumor was found at his cerebellum. Worthless as a product. They even refer to them as products. The monsters. Name. Carol Carolina Albeck Albachakov? Female, 17, physical condition good, mental condition good, medicine, tranquilizer, Timmy G, and soup for every breakfast. Clearly more human trafficking. And since this is an umbrella we're talking about, well, it'd be pretty freaking bizarre if they weren't engaging in that. Surprises are in store for me in this room. Wait a minute, did I just go back the way I came? I need to make sure that I got everything out of that room first. Actually, I do have a map. Why don't I just consult that real fast? I don't want to look at file right now. Buddy! 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 Wait a minute. 13. Patience chart. Okay. Oh, okay. That just tells me how many files are in the game total. Okay. Exit. Map. Okay, so it just circles around. Kind of. At least it'll allow me to go around the barricade. Yeah, it's been a, been a while since I played, so I don't exactly remember a few things. This is a guide map of this hospital we got. I can only read like about half of those things. Wonderful if meet any friendly faces here. Hi! You almost had the drop on me. Almost, but not quite. 
Now, if this doesn't look like this, now if this doesn't look like this, the scene from a horror movie, I don't know what does. And we got our first first aid spray. Some blood splotches on the on the bed here. This bed is stained with blood. If I had to guess, somebody flew right out the window. Probably, probably we're getting attacked by zombies and they just stumbled right on out. Or, another idea, something just burst right into the room from the outside. That's also a distinct possibility. Look at that! A new weapon! I got the handgun B. Item. Handgun B. Let's check. Not combine. Check. The CZ-75. This is a small gun which uses 9x19 parabellum rounds. Isn't it usually 19x18? Anyway, uh... If memory serves, this is my uh, preferred gun in the entire game because it's semi-automatic. Basically, meaning it fires basically as fast as I can pull the trigger. It's uh, got, I think it's, but I think it also has a weaker fire firepower than my first hand gun. But I mean, if you're just able to just keep getting a bunch of consecutive hits on enemies. I mean, it kind of almost stun locks. It kind of stun locks most of them anyway, so... To me, this is the most broken gun in the game. For sure. This appears to be the power switch of the elevator. You've turned the switch on. I'll put this uh, little gun to the test here as soon as I see more zombies. trying to remember. I don't think I went through the hospital on my very first run. I think I probably went through a restaurant of some kind. I can't shoot the TV out. A dropper is placed here. I think it's called a dripper. Or an IV drip. This, this is an intercom call in nurses. So you mean a, a patient has to uh, get up from their bed and push a button? That's kind of inconvenient. I mean, usually, last I checked here, they give you little remotes here that they place right next to you that you can just click anytime you need to call a nurse. Come on, Umbrella. You're supposed to be a big, giant pharmaceutical company. You can't even do intercoms right. Okay. Yeah, see what I mean? The Saint's pretty good for uh, just spam stun locking them. Especially if you uh, hit them in vital areas like the head or stuff, or even the feet. A 
In fact, as long as you're good enough of a handgun, you can pretty much get through the entire game without ever having to use a single other weapon once. Which to me is definitely an issue with a classic Resident Evil game because I, th you really need because the game needs to be a bit more balanced like that. Like your guns, your handgun is supposed to be weak, like one of your weakest weapons. It's something that you use for like zombies and weak enemies and stuff like that. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be uh, made to such a degree. Should be relied on as much as. It clearly is here. I mean, I guess... It, but I guess also it kind of makes sense that the handgun has unlimited ammunition here, considering that... It's like a rail shooter that you can move at, that you can basically have... Like, you get to move and go wherever the hell you wish, wherever you wish, but... I think... I think they could have at least made the handguns very weak. At least a lot weaker than what they are right now. So things feel a bit more uh, balanced, shall we say. But, well, it is what it is. Okay, I don't see any key items anywhere, so let's move on. Hi! Anybody remember this gentleman from Resident Evil 2? It's Big Green, aka Mr. X. Or at least one one Mr. X anyway. Uh, hi, uh, excuse me, I just want to get through. Oh shit, I didn't mean to go in here. Yeah, another criticism I have with this game whether it be doors or items you come across in the game, if you if you go if you touch them, you automatically interact with them. And frankly, I don't really like that. Now I wonder if my little uh, back trick will work with him. Yep, it works with him. Poor guy. He must be getting so angry right now, demanding silently that I turn to face him and take it like a man. And well, I'll do that right now. Uh, Crap. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, what? Get out of my way! Uh, also, I'm just now noticing your blood is green. Yeah, even in this game, Mr. X's aren't as durable as, say, Nemesis. We've got acid rounds. And I forgot you can shoot some stuff in the game's environment, which is pretty neat. Like, can I shoot... Okay, I apparently can't shoot that. Or that. Oh shit, 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 oh shit! What the shit? Oh god, oh god. Holy shit! Well, I'll be damned. I totally forgot about that. That all those enemies would be there, lying in wait for me. Uh, let me mix my red herb here. If this was literally every other, any other Resident Evil game... Oh my god, I don't have... I... Shit, man! I need to find a blue herb somewhere. I... Oh my god, I just used my first aid spray. What? I... Gah! I 
hate the different button layout that they have for this compared to the last three Resident Evil games. Okay, let's deal with this shit again, shall we? Where the hell are the rest of those spiders? Okay, whatever. Uh, what'd that say? It appears to be a locker used to store corpses. Yes, we are in a morgue. Okay, I gotta find a blue herb somewhere. This appears to be a computer used to control the dynamo. This appears to be the emergency switch with the dynamo. It's not responding. Well, isn't that just unfortunate? We use the manhole opener. Okay, maybe there might be a blue herb somewhere down this manhole. No one is admitted to this room without a permit. Now, this isn't unsettling. I don't know what is. Okay, is there a blue herb somewhere down this way? The, the manhole lid is closed. It's locked from the other side. Okay, we definitely gotta go this way then. Did you run any faster? I mean, you're you are kind of suffering from from some poison from a giant fucking spider. I think you are in dire need of some miracle weed right now. Um. Okay. Stupid chair. Uh, we tamed Janitor Andy's diary. Sewer Caretaker, Andy's Diary. September 6th. I've never seen him, but I heard that one called Vincent has become the city's supreme commander. Officially, he is an elite sent by Umbrella Headquarters. In truth, he is such a fiend that he would not hesitate to kill his friend if it would promote him. Apparently, I'm a lovely chap, aren't I? Well, since I live here in this dark sewer, it doesn't mean anything to me. September 20th. I heard a disgusting rumor. The new commander, Vincent, orders the, orders the facility personnel to do savage experiments every day on kids brought in from all over the world. I don't even know why those kids were brought to the city, but it sure is disturbing. Well, you think? Well, I don't want to get involved, so long as it doesn't affect me. Bystander Syndrome at its finest, finest. October 10th. It seems some terrible accident happened above ground last night. I don't know any more details, but I heard that Commander Vincent has done something cruel. November 9th. Today at last, Commander Vincent came down here for an inspection. We made small talk, but I could see nothing but cruelty in him. When I took a picture of him as a souvenir, he became very angry. He's such a jerk. Got that picture on you? A picture? This picture's all along the wall. No! This is me! I am Vincent! It was all my fault! Apparently. Who are you? Wait. Please don't kill me. What's with those weird uh, hand I movements? I didn't know anything voice? about you then. Stop. Like seriously, what was with those hand movements? It was like he was doing some weird dance or some shit. Like the character movements with this in this game compared to past Resident Evil games are just weird even by classic RE standards. And that right there was an example of one of them. Like seriously, who moves like that? Blue herb. 
Uh, hi. Get down here, buddy. Really good gun to use against these lickers, due to how fast the rate of fire is. They're very prone to stun locking. Ugh. Come on. Give me a, give me something. Anything. Something with blue in it. I'll even take some freaking uh, cake. I'll even take some freaking cake dye or something. Maybe that'll do. Buddy, I am trying to kill you. And as you can see, I am unwell. Go easy on me. Actually, on second thought, not too easy. This prison. So we are in a prison complex now. Come on, give me something. Ah. Oh boy. Not good. Here's the ma management record of the prison. Yeah, that's interesting and all, but I really could use something to cure my poison. Anything. Various books on Umbrella are lined up here. Uh, you got a nice office, whoever you are. These leather chairs, these leather couches look comfortable. Priest, prison chief's diary. October 20th. Today we received a reply to a report about the incident where 20 guinea pigs committed suicide the other day. The headquarters does not seem to have any suspicions and says that they plan to gather replacement guinea pigs soon. It's too late, but now I'm starting to regret that I sent a fake report of a mass suicide incident when it was actually a mass escape. However, as long as I stay in this city, it means death to me if I dare to oppose Commander Vincent. I'll never forget the cruel smile of Vincent when he was shooting at the boys who tried to escape from the prison on that night. Again, a lovely chap, this Commander Vincent. It looked as if he were killing a bunch of insects. Commander Vincent is indeed a very cold-blooded person just as he is rumored to be. He is a true murderer. I'm in a position where I am supposed to report the truth to headquarters, but I'm so afraid of Commander Vincent. I don't know what to do. You know that, uh... You know that uh, you are a pretty heinous individual if, uh... If, if several of your colleagues from Umbrella, of all places, are horrified by some reactions.
anything at all. They don't even allow the prisoners to wear clothes. Monsters. Let go of me. I wonder if the slowdown has anything to do with the health of the clothes. these two things and heal. Huh. That did absolutely nothing to do to help to slow down. Young Man's Diary. An imprisoned boy's diary. September 5th. Sixteen days have passed since I was abducted on a street in Congo by the men in black and was brought here. The Democratic Republic of Congo, of Congo, I assume? I didn't understand what was happening at first, but I gradually became aware of the truth of the city. We seem to be confined here to serve as guinea pigs for a medical company called Umbrella Inc. All the residents of this city work for Umbrella. Even the women and children are, fam are family members and employees. The guinea pigs seem to be gathered from all over the world. The guy in the root next room is from China. The one in front of my cell is from Brazil. The rest are Russian, Japanese. It's like a world trade show. It's strange that it's strange that they are all around my age. The youngest is 16, and the oldest is 19 or 20. Those guys from Umbrella sometimes take us to an arcade or to a nightclub so we can enjoy ourselves and relieve our stress. But I won't let them deceive me. I will escape from this place, no matter what it takes. I must. Anyway, the most important thing to do now is to organize and gather our comrades for what lies ahead. And given that 20 of you were murdered in your escape attempt, well, I'm pretty sure things didn't end too well for you. You're probably among the 20 that got shot. September 20th. No, tent, excuse me. Recently, the others have been behaving strangely. It seems that they put some kind of weird drug into our meals. Probably tranquilizer and hallucinogens. I sometimes lose consciousness, too. I have to be careful. September 21st. I can't believe it. Another friend of mine, Chin, from the next room, was taken to the factory on the mountain. I don't think Chin's coming back. He will meet the same fate as Anna or Jacob who disappeared last week. I know. I know what happens to those who are taken to the factory on the mountain. When he took me to a nightclub yesterday, I overheard a conversation that some factory workers were having. Were having what? Under orders from Vincent, the commander of the city, they cut open our brains and extract some kind of material, whatever they call it. Yikes. All I can say is that Vincent is a devil. No, not just Vincent. Even the women and children in the city don't treat us as human beings, but as guinea pigs. Well, if that's true, then, well, it's kind of hard to feel very much sympathy for a lot of the residents of this city by default, then. All the people in this city are evil. I will surely be killed if I stay here any longer. We have to hurry and execute our escape plan. October 9th. The time has come. I have noticed the Umbrella people have been visibly disturbed for about a week or so. Rumor has it that there was a terrible accident at the Umbrella Laboratory somewhere in America. All the prison guards seem to be very busy gathering information on the accident, so, so security isn't as tight. We've organized our comrades already. 
um, Stojkovic and Enrique are supposed to steal the, the keys from the guards. Sankhan and I will act as decoys, and Yoshikawa and Philippi are in charge of gathering weapons. October 10th. We have decided on our escape route. The plan will be carried out at 11 p.m. tonight. We have 20 members separated into two units, Unit A and Unit B. Unit A will go into the sewer through the, the ventilation slot of the confinement room, while Unit B will use a rope use a rope to climb down from the surveillance tower. We'll use the rope they used to tie us. If we fail, Vincent will surely kill us. But if we stay here, Vincent will order them to cut our brains eventually. We're dead either way, but I'd rather die trying to escape. Well, given that kind of ultimatum, I'd be right there with you. Poor guy. Now, it'd be nice if somebody could... His neck has been cut open by a sharp blade. wonder who did that to you. And you have also been, had your neck cut open. Come on, guys, I'm desperate. Give me something blue. Shotgun. It's always nice to have a shotgun, even though I'm probably never going to really need it at all. Huh. Oh shit, hunters. Shit! I died! This is... Well... Definitely a first. I guess in this... in I... Well, then again... Yeah, no, yeah, I was an idiot when it's, I should have... I shouldn't have just stayed in that and stayed still while all those spires were spitting at me. Well, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cut things off here. I can we can uh, resume from this point on and continue exploring this prison in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this first episode of Resident Evil Survivor. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care.